Would you exchange your biometric data for $50? It might sound like something out of a dystopian fantasy, but this is the actual dilemma faced by the unfortunate victims WorldCoin has preyed upon. In 2019, an idea for a strange new startup was conceived. WorldCoin, a company that promises cryptocurrency in exchange for our iris scans. Sam Altman, the mastermind behind OpenAI, along with collaborators Alex Blania and Max Novenstern, collaborated to turn this vision into reality. Their mission? To establish a method for verifying human identities online, countering the imminent threat of AI-generated fake personas. In a world where the distinction between AI and human identity is growing increasingly blurred, the demand for an identity marker becomes all the more urgent. However, the story takes an unexpected turn here. As events unfold, a darker side of WorldCoin is revealed, exposing its predatory practices towards vulnerable populations in developing countries, the emergence of a data black market, and even involvement with the dark web. As we embark on this journey, we'll unravel the layers behind WorldCoin's facade and how it preyed upon millions of vulnerable individuals. This is the shocking truth behind WorldCoin. The beginnings of WorldCoin are shrouded in mystery. However, the little information at hand indicates that the project surfaced in approximately 2019 when Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, realized that AI's rapid advancement could soon outpace human capabilities. This realization prompted him to devise a solution. What was this solution? A cryptocurrency project that scans irises through devices known as chrome orbs, capturing unique iris patterns in exchange for cryptocurrencies. These iris scans would serve as a secure and individualized form of online identity verification. Collaborating with Alex Blania and Max Novenstern, they embarked on the creation of a project named WorldCoin. Their activities remained hidden from the public eye for several years. It wasn't until years later when alarming headlines surfaced that the world would come to realize that WorldCoin had already begun testing citizens in developing countries, exploiting their vulnerable economic situations, enticing them to surrender their biometric data with minimal incentives. On October 21st, 2021, a headline by CNBC's Ryan Brown gained worldwide attention. Silicon Valley entrepreneur Sam Altman wants to scan your eyes in exchange for free cryptocurrency. The CEO of OpenAI was a driving force behind a startup that offered cryptocurrency in return for individuals' biometric data. Despite its abrupt appearance, WorldCoin had already managed to attract significant investments from Silicon Valley and had secured backing from influential figures propelling its valuation to an incredible $1 billion. By this time, WorldCoin had already deployed its orbs in a dozen countries, most of them were developing nations. While critics describe this startup as something out of a dystopian fiction, concrete accusations against WorldCoin were notably absent. Legally and on the surface, everything appeared fine. However, the illusion was soon shattered by a revelation that exposed the deceitful methods employed by WorldCoin to onboard its initial users. By April 2022, WorldCoin had already amassed half a million test users. Notably, the majority of these users were from poor communities in developing nations, often possessed a limited understanding of the internet to the extent that operators were required to assist them in setting up email accounts and navigating the web. Which brings up an important question, why did WorldCoin choose to concentrate its efforts on these disadvantaged communities? The disturbing answer to that question was unveiled on April 6, 2022 through an expose by MIT Technology Review. In Sudan, orb operators orchestrated an AirPod giveaway contest that resulted in approximately 20,000 signups. In Indonesia's West Java province, WorldCoin presented itself as a cryptocurrency workshop tricking school activity coordinators into believing it was solely for knowledge sharing rather than an attempt to encourage students to invest in digital currency. But WorldCoin's deceptive tactics didn't end there. 
In Gunung Guru, Indonesia, they went under the guise of a social assistance giveaway at a local Islamic elementary school, enticing the villagers with cash handouts compelling them into submitting their iris scans. Now, despite WorldCoin's claim that they were only collecting iris scans, further investigation revealed the true extent of data collection extended beyond just iris scans. A leaked data consent form from WorldCoin revealed that a contactless Doppler radar detection of your heartbeat, breathing, and other vital signs were also conducted. Despite suspicions of a potential scam, individuals in these communities were desperate for any form of assistance. Many had lost their livelihoods during the pandemic, while others faced looming threats of civil unrest. Some armed with a basic understanding of crypto held hopes that WorldCoin could be the next Bitcoin. Amidst their diverse situations, one fact remains evident. These individuals were in dire need of financial support and were unknowingly pressured into giving up their biometric information without fully understanding the consequences. Once more, shifting our focus to the question, why did WorldCoin choose to concentrate its efforts on these disadvantaged communities? Upon further investigation, the answer might lie with the orb operators themselves, who, as it turns out, were also victims of an even larger scheme. A Kenyan orb operator disclosed that he was enticed with a meager financial incentive of 44 cents per scan. His training as an orb operator solely consisted with the instruction to bring in more people to earn more money. When questioned about privacy concerns, he was instructed to refer to a non-existent white paper. Despite the dubious circumstances, the allure of money was too strong for him to decline, leading him to enroll people in the program. In the aftermath of the project, even the orb operators who facilitated the data collection felt a sense of betrayal. One orb operator expressed his sentiments stating, and I quote, 35 cents is not worth trading for an eyeball. This is manipulation, capitalizing on individuals without providing clear explanations about the purpose or implications. Finally, the motive behind WorldCoin's decision to target struggling communities became clear. WorldCoin's choice of these communities was not by coincidence, it was a cold, calculated move. In areas where financial resources are scarce and legal protections are inadequate, conducting data collection operations becomes remarkably cheap and convenient. To put it simply, offering small financial incentives or even just a chance to win AirPods in a giveaway emerged as a tempting incentive for individuals in challenging circumstances to share their biometric data. But also, the limited legal protection within these areas would alleviate WorldCoin's concerns about the potential legal repercussions while carrying out their operations. In a bid to salvage the reputation, WorldCoin's leadership eventually released interviews attempting to rationalize their practices. However, these interviews only hinted at the darker aspects of their operations, raising further concerns. In a revealing interview on July 25, 2023, Alex Blania, the co-founder of WorldCoin, stepped forward to defend the project, pushing back against any accusations of deception. He countered by emphasizing that 50% of signups were from more affluent countries. However, when Sam Altman, the co-founder of WorldCoin, faced a similar inquiry, he seemingly admitted, and I quote, I can't point to any system of this magnitude and aspiration that hasn't faced some fraud issues. Now this is where it gets concerning, because it came to light that the data gathered from their initial 450,000 participants was retained for the purpose of training their AI neural network, which is a big contrast to their initial promise of erasing the data once it was collected. Despite these revelations, WorldCoin persisted with its questionable practices. By August 3rd, 2023, the project had extended its reach, scanning 2.2 million irises across nearly 20 countries, most of which were still developing regions. Despite facing criticism, WorldCoin continued on, motivated by the goal of creating a system to verify human identities online and implement a universal identification framework. Yet, as the story continued to unfold, a series of events would emerge that would not only challenge WorldCoin's effectiveness, but also question the very foundation upon which it was built.
In May 2023, unsettling headlines began to ripple across the tech world. TechCrunch reported a breach. Hackers stole passwords of WorldCoin orb operators. These hackers, armed with malicious intent, had infiltrated multiple WorldCoin operator devices, gaining unbridled access to their dashboards. Within months, credentials of several operators surfaced on the dark web, casting a shadow over WorldCoin security measures. While WorldCoin spokesperson was quick to assure that that no sensitive or personal user data was compromised, the depth of accessible data by these operators remained unknown. Some reports hinted at the potential exposure of email addresses, phone numbers, and even national ID card scans. But the revelations didn't stop there. By late May, another headline sent shockwaves. Black market for WorldCoin credentials pop up in China. This underground market thriving on Chinese social media platforms was traded in WorldCoin wallets, ID services, and credentials primarily from developing nations like Cambodia and Kenya. The target audience? Chinese citizens aiming to sidestep their country's strict crypto trade restrictions. Most alarmingly, Blockbeast unveiled that fake iris scans were being sold for a mere $20. This challenged WorldCoin's foundational belief that iris scans were a foolproof method of establishing one's identity. WorldCoin, which began as a visionary project to counter the challenges posed by AI's rapid advancements, now finds itself deep in controversy. Their original mission to provide a reliable identity authentication system has come under fire due to allegations of security lapse, data leaks, and the spread of counterfeit iris scans. This isn't just a tale of a cryptocurrency startup's missteps, it is a cautionary narrative about the extremes companies might reach in their data pursuits, the susceptibility of marginalized communities, and the unforeseen repercussions of intertwining technology with our very identity. As we stand at this crossroads, the WorldCoin saga prompts us to reflect on the broader implications of our digital age. With tech technology offering unparalleled conveniences, it also presents us with profound ethical challenges. How do we navigate this new world where our identity can be commodified and traded? And most importantly, at what cost are we willing to barter our biometric data?